Hi everyone and welcome to Tickets TV. Today we have for you a neat demonstration of one of our enterprise functions, daisy chaining. Daisy chaining will allow you to easily expand your data pool and it is simple to set up and it will keep your expenses to a minimum. Through this video we will show you what you require to perform daisy chaining and give you a look at how to do it. So we took all the units out of the box and lay them down here on the table. Uh, normally you will have all of those units set up in a rack mount cabinet, but for the purpose of this test we will not do this. In front over here what we have is the N16000 NAS. And nicely lined up in the back we have four D16000 DAS. Each unit can host 16 HDDs. That will bring you to a total of 80 HDDs, which you'll be able to reach close to 400 terabytes of storage under one setup. First thing you'll need to get ready are all your hard drives, so here are 80 of them. We would like to thank Seagate for letting us borrow so many hard drives for the purpose of this test. Each HDD will need to be secured with 4 screws to each uh, hard drive tray. Gather as much people as you can and the next step will only take you a few minutes. Once you have inserted all the hard drive in the unit, the next step will be to plug the units. To be able to achieve daisy chaining, a SAS controller will need to be added to your master unit. In this case, uh, our master unit is the N16000. As you can see, we have removed the top of the unit to give you a better look at what's inside. First, we have the four fans that will keep your hard drive at safe temperature. As we move on, we have the redundant power blocks, the four cards of DDR3 RAM, here the dedicated fan to cool down the processor, and finally the SAS wide port controller, which is connected via PCIe to the motherboard. With this controller you will have two SAS ports that will enable you to connect your DAS units to the master NAS using these cables. So from the main unit to the first DAS, make sure the groove in the connector is up and inserted com completely. Connect the master NAS to the first DAS, the first to the second, second to the third and third to the fourth. Once you have the unit plugged and you know their order, it is important to identify each DAS unit. At the back of the D16000, you can find a little dial that can be set to a specific number. If an issue was to happen, this will help you to identify which unit is which when you work from the back of a rack mount cabinet. Lastly, plug in the power cable to each unit. The NAS and the DAS units are equipped with redundant power supply. So if one power supply were to suddenly fail, the second one would instantly take over, saving you from losing access to your data. The next step is to power on the units. On the front panel, simply turn the power switch on. If you do not have both power block plugged, uh, a warning sound will be heard. At the back of the unit, between each power outlet, what you can see there is a small button and you can press it to turn off the warning sound. Alright. Now that all your DAS are powered, as well as your NAS, we will be ready to start creating a RAID volume as soon as the N16000 completes its startup procedure and becomes available. We simply plug the laptop directly to the master NAS here. As you can see, the power cable, network cable, and SAS cables are all plugged in. Same thing for the D16000 units. The white light shows you that all the hard drives are working properly. And if you look at the front panel of each DAS, you'll see that they are numbered. So here's number one, and here's the second unit, well, and so on. For the rest of the video, we'll show you the setup process from the admin UI. To access the admin UI, you'll need to enter the master NAS IP address in the address bar of your internet browser. By default, the username and password are admin. Here you have a look at the Tickus OS 5. By clicking on the disk information icon, you'll be able to monitor all of your HDDs. So here we have the first master NAS showing 16 healthy hard drives, then the first D16000, the second, the third, and the fourth one. If one unit was to display only 15 HDDs, that would mean that we have a faulty hard drive somewhere. By identifying which unit is it from, we can go and easily replace the HDD if needed. Now that we know that all our HDD are recognized and healthy, we can start creating the RAID volume. So go and open the RAID management and select create. Select all the hard drive you want to include in your RAID volume. From here we'll create a RAID 1. 
After selecting all the needed HDDs, go on and click Next, select RAID 1, click Next, Quick RAID, Next, Next again, and Submit. Creating a RAID volume will erase all the existing data on your hard drive. So if you have anything you wish to keep on them, make sure to back them up somewhere safe. Depending on the size of your hard drives, the RAID creation process can take several hours. Once the process shows the RAID to be healthy, you are ready to go. Let's say for example that uh, some of the hard drives were not included in your original creation of the RAID or perhaps you added a DAS unit to your daisy chain. You can use additional hard drives to migrate your RAID into a different level. Here we kept 8 HDDs out when creating the RAID 1. So go under RAID Management, select your RAID and then Edit. On the top of the window you'll see three tabs. Select Migrate RAID. Here you'll see the list of available HDDs that are not currently used in the RAID. Select them, then at the bottom of the window you'll see what kind of options you have for migration. Here we have the RAID 1 to RAID 5 available. Click Apply, then Yes to the warning messages. Type in Yes to confirm and there you go. Your RAID 1 will start to migrate into a RAID 5. Again, this process is also very long and will take several hours. Once your RAID is shown as healthy, your storage pool will be, will be then available. Another option available is RAID Expand. The size of all HDD will be determined by the smallest one of them all. So if from your 80 HDDs, uh, one of them is only one terabyte, and the rest of them are 4 terabytes. well, all of your HDDs will be considered as 1 terabyte. You can replace that 1 terabyte HDD by a 4 terabyte one, but unless you perform a RAID expand, the available space will not be recognized. Once you replace a hard drive, go under RAID Management, select your RAID, and then click Edit. Choose the Expand RAID tab. Then click Apply and confirm you want to proceed. And there you go, your data pool will be expanded after the process is complete. So there you go, this is how you can set up Daisy Chain. Create a RAID, migrate it and expand it. Another option to expand your data pool is Volume Expansion, where you can connect 8 branches of NAS in its Daisy Chaining to achieve a massive volume of storage under one management solution. Thank you for joining Tickets TV for this demonstration and stay tuned by following us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and our blog.